the first step if you want to change if you want to change your marriage first thing is to put on your own face mask, your own gas mask oxygen mask which is take care of your heart you may not know how hurt you are until you start doing some of the things that i tell you to do you may not know that you're so hurt your heart is broken you will not know that you have a hard heart let's look at scriptures so that you can see what i'm talking about matthew chapter 7 verse 12 it says so whatever you wish that others will do to you do also to them for this is the law and the prophets if you're not healthy your heart is not good you wouldn't even know what you want others to do to you so that's why we start with the heart that's why we start with the heart and uh, so what do we do with the heart the first thing i ask you and i want you to focus on is from in its on a scale of one to ten what is your joy level level generally regardless of your marriage right now how joyful are you how peaceful are you and even of course with your marriage your marriage is part of your life on a daily basis for the last two three weeks one month five months what would you say your joy level is if your joy level is anything below seven we need some work to be done um if it's really below five we really need to focus on it so if you are like three four you know i'm not most times i'm sad i'm not happy even when i'm at work i'm thinking about home and it doesn't i'm just i'm not happy if um at playing with my children and I, my my spouse the thought of him or her comes to my mind i'm not happy there's no joy anywhere and uh, not only that my brother is this my uncle is doing that my auntie is doing that my job my my boss is doing this if you look at your life and you notice that a good portion of it is not happy then you need to work on joy makeover and in joy makeover what we do is help you discover and understand and accept that your joy is not a function of what people do outside you it is a function of a decision you've made based on your understanding of who god is and what god has done in your life if you don't understand it you will notice that your joy is not going to be full now that reminds me of something that happened in new york and uh, as i was at the bank i saw this buggy come in with a purse and so the amish community is not too far from there and uh this lady <laughs> comes out of it and goes to she, i saw her walking into the bank with her baby and i was i was amazed at the fact that some people have chosen to live a simple life they wake up there's no electricity they don't drive vehicles there's they don't use crude oil in any way <laughs> they, they and what i was surprised i saw her come into the bank so they use the bank and but they don't use most of the things we use and they are having a life there there's a there's peace there and you know the, what came to mind is that Adi, you know look at this you know this but be reminded that you and god alone can determine and design the life that you can you want to live do not be sucked into this race this desire to live life but the way other people have created it and you you break yourself so i'm sharing this story because it reminds me of this first level in joy makeover it is important that you define how joy comes what is the source of joy for you the holy spirit is the source of joy the heart is the source of joy if you're not joyful it's not because of what anybody did so we're gonna we walk with that that is roadmap walk on that keep working on it until you get to the point where you can say regardless of the pain that my wife or my husband is causing to causing me my joy level is at least at seven i'm just doing this to get even better i'm joyful right now right so you work on that what do you need to do to work on that get to understand what god has done for you who god has made you your identity your person you who is you who are you who is who is the real person that i'm talking to right now what what identifies you right what makes you you so you work on all of that by the time you're done doing that you notice that you are different what's your 10-year goal what do you think god is doing for you doing in you through you what's your purpose beyond your marriage 
beyond your children. What would you be reminded for by the time uh, remember for when you leave this earth? If you don't answer or deal with all of these situations, you will be attaching your joy to others and you'll be frustrated and in pain and you cause your, your, your spouse even more pain. All right? So the next thing is forgiveness clinic. So when we've done joy makeover and we've worked on you and you understand uh, where your joy is, you already move forward. And the first thing you will notice is that when your spouse does anything wrong, you are not quick to judge them anymore. You're not quick to attack them because the reason why you attack is you assume that they're taking something from you. But when you notice that my life is designed by myself, I'm gone and people that come in that just passing through the process and my God is able to use their interference, even to move me forward. You, at, you begin to look at the, the interactions of people with you from an external view. You're no longer judging them and judging the, their situation as if it's permanent, as if that's the whole thing. You're able to look at it and say, this is just a temporary situation that we can work on. So your joy level will change. And once your joy level changes, everything changes. The next thing to even move you to increase your joy level is to work on forgiveness. Unforgiveness is one of the major reasons why a lot of people struggle in trusting God, in receiving miracles, in praying and getting answers to prayer, because somehow you believe that those who hurt you, God does not see that and he will not judge properly. And when you think that God is not a good judge, you will cause yourself harm. And so a lot of people just suppress the problem because they say, I'm a Christian and should forgive. So they suppress it. They say, I've forgiven you, but they've not forgiven. Because they don't know how to forgive because they don't trust God to deal with the issue. So we, you work on your forgiveness, you, your ability to release all this pain that you have bottled. So that's what we call it forgiveness. But the real thing is what you're doing is you're releasing yourself. You're releasing, you're throwing out all the keys, all the things that you have been using to, to hold yourself bound. Right. You learn how to do that. And to do that is to learn how to resolve the issues and release them. There's a whole three step process that I take you through. And, and I, I, if you look at some of my videos, maybe you've seen me talk about that. So you, you're not just suppressing and you're not approving of someone's errors. You're not um, ignoring the, 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 the pain. You're not trying to cover up for them. All of that is not forgiveness. Forgiveness is releasing them to God, right? To say, God, I can't deal with this. This person has hurt me. I know what they've done is wrong, but you are God. You have more information than I do. I surrender them to you and move forward. That is what you do. And as you do that, another big weight is lifted from you. The last thing that you do in this level of working on yourself is the habits that you have learned to cope. Now, if you go, uh, anywhere on the internet, you, you will see so many terrible things, painful things. There are so many stories going around every day. The ones that you're hearing, the ones that you've experienced, maybe someone has hurt you in sec in primary school, your parents have hurt you, your neighbors, you built up so many habits that you use to cope so that people don't hurt you keep and your heart is hardened, but you don't want more hurt. We we'll work on that to release those habits. When you release those habits, you will be in a different world, entirely different zone. You're no longer afraid because you have learned how to release all the negatives. And because so the habits, each habit, for example, the habit of you don't trust anybody um, or whenever anybody wants to do hurt you, you must shout at them so that they can, or attack them so that they can change and behave differently. So these are some of the habits you, you may have. These habits, they, they further make your heart hardened. They make you lose your joy and your peace even more. So when you stop those habits, after learning to forgive and change your vision, the way you see life, you will see that you are you're way more healthy. You can see others more clearly. The, the pain that you're feeling disappears. So if you have been blessed today, do not forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, share with your friends <clears throat> and uh, continue to work hard on loving like Jesus 
working on your heart, allowing God to heal you so that you can be a blessing to those who are around you.